Hi, Damien here with Seraform. Today I want to talk to you about SSPM, SaaS Security Posture Management. Now there's been an increase in organizations using SaaS apps. Employees now have the ability to access company resources outside of the corporate network. This has introduced new threats. SSPM can provide control over which users have access to what data. Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps is Microsoft's CASB solution. Microsoft has responded to these new threats by increasing its security stack. It provides two additional products, SSPM and App Governance. Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps extended SSPM features to third-party apps like GitHub and Salesforce, among others. SSPM allows configurations of third-party apps. In a nutshell, SSPM provides best practices and the reduction of misconfigurations. So what I want to do now is show you a demonstration. It's going to be comprised of four parts. The SSO configuration in Azure Active Directory, the SSO configuration in Salesforce, the third-party app connection through Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps, and the SSPM feature, meaning secure score, through the Defender portal. So let's jump in and get started. Okay, let's log into the Azure portal. This is going to be a demo environment. I'm going to MFA. This is Microsoft Azure, the dashboard. From this window, I'm going to click on Azure Active Directory. Then Enterprise Applications. You can see Salesforce is already created, but you would click on New Application. And in the search, you would type in the app you're looking for, in this case, Salesforce. I'll click on that. And from this window, you can click on create. Again, I already have one done, so I'm gonna close this off. And I'm gonna to return to enterprise applications and click on Salesforce. In this window, let's click on single sign on. You know, it's, uh, it's important to understand the login flow of how SSO works. So I'm going to go on onto uh, whiteboard and I want to provide a visual of what that looks like. Just give me a second while I set this up here. There's three components. There's the user, the service provider, which is Salesforce in this case, and the identity provider, which is Azure Active Directory for purposes of this demonstration. SSO is, a, is an authentication scheme. It allows um, users to use multiple services or applications with a single sign-on or a single ID. There are uh, typically two protocols that are used, SAML and OpenID. Uh, we're gonna be, I'm gonna be showing the SAML protocol of how that works. So initially the user will request the service provider by attempting to log in. Uh, the service provider will identify that it's a work domain being used and it will provide the user an SAR, which is a SAML authentication request. That automatically gets forwarded to the identity provider and the identity provider will show the user the login page. The user will use the credentials and those credentials will be sent back to the identity provider at which time they're verified. Once that verification process is completed, the identity provider will send the user a SAML assertion token. Essentially, that's, uh, it's an XML document which has uh, user information and also has what that user is allowed to access. That assertion token is then sent to the service provider and it's verified 
to ensure that it was uh, signed by the identity provider itself. Once that's completed, the final step is the service provider will grant access to the user for whatever protected resources they were requesting from the initial login screen. Let's jump back into the Azure portal. This is where we left off. You can see that the uh, configurations are done numerically. If I click on edit, this is basic SAML configurations. Let's close this window off. Uh, under number three, you can see it says SAML certificates. This is where you can download the metadata XML file, which you can use in Salesforce. Eventually you're gonna make your way to number five. And uh, this configuration is done in Salesforce. So let's click on that and jump over to Salesforce and click on settings and then setup. You can go to identity and then find single sign on settings. You'll notice that SAML enabled checkbox is selected. So make sure that that's done on your end as well. And then uh, you can click on new. I'll open mine up. You'll see the identity provider verification certificate is uh, already uploaded. And at the bottom, your organization URL is outlined. But I'm going to go to quick find for a second and find my domain. And you can see that uh, the domain URL is going to be the one that's used through the SSO uh, sign on. If I scroll down, you'll see the login page type is standard and the authentication service is login form Azure SSO. So we jumped back into the Salesforce website and I'm going to show you the locations of how to configure a custom support profile and where to create new users. Once we're done that, we'll go to the Azure portal and we'll do a final SSO test to ensure that everything's configured properly. From here, let's click on users and then profiles and then custom support profile. Here's where you can configure the permissions and the layouts for the users. From here, let's go to users. You can click on new. I'll show you uh, demo user two. And you can see the username is demo user two at seraformdemo.com. So let's jump over to the Azure portal now. And let's click on test. We'll sign in as someone else. And it redirects you to a new page. Let's click on login with Azure SSO. And I'm going to type in the username. And the password. You can see uh, Salesforce is being monitored. You're not able to see it right now, but uh, the URL shows that it's through a proxy and that's because of Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps. If I click on view profile, you'll see demo user two is signed on and uh, successfully configured. I wanna pause for a second and talk to you about secure score. Secure score is a measure of your organizational security posture. Remember, a higher number indicates more recommended actions have been taken. Secure score is available through a centralized dashboard in the Defender portal. These recommended actions taken can help your organization by reporting the current state of your security posture. It can also provide discoverability and visibility, provide benchmarks or KPIs, and it does daily syncs to provide new information. Now, a really good feature about Secure Score is that it has the ability to connect to all sorts of different products. 
I'm going to show you how to connect Salesforce in the Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps portal. From there, we'll go to the Microsoft 365 Defender portal where I can show you the secure score. This is where the recommended actions take place. From that location, we can go to Salesforce and actually implement the recommended actions. And to wrap it all up, we'll go back to the Defender portal under secure score and you'll see how the implementation is successfully completed. So this is the Microsoft Defender for Cloud Apps portal. Under Investigate, let's click on Connected Apps. You'll see that Salesforce has already been connected, but you can click on Connect an App, find Salesforce, and it brings you to this window here. This uh, window will run you through that connection wizard. Again, I already have it done, so I'm going to close this off. You see the status shows connected with a green check mark. If I click on that, it'll expand it. And on the bottom right hand corner, you'll see Secure Score Insight Main Instance. The main instance is set by default if you have one connection to this app. But if you had multiple connections to the same app, you want to make sure that main instance is selected to the connection that you want to reflect the recommended actions in the Secure Score. Uh, again, that's in the Defender portal. So let's jump over there and I'll show you what I mean. From here, let's click on Secure Score. This is the overview page. Essentially, it provides the current state of your organizational security posture. At the top are actions to review. The top recommended actions section uh, reflects all your products. And at the bottom, you'll see some history with the uh, activity involved. Let's click on recommended actions. And under product, I'm going to find Salesforce. And these are the list of recommended actions. At the bottom are completed ones. As an example, let's click on require a minimum one day password lifetime. And it opens up another window which gives you general information, uh, the description, the implementation status, and the user impact. The most important is actually the implementation tab. So let's click on that. And it gives you the prerequisite and the next steps needed. The history tab just shows some history about that uh, recommended action. Let's go over to Salesforce now and let's actually implement this recommended action. Now let's do exactly what that implementation tab suggested. Let's find password policies. And ensure that this is selected. Let's save it. And it does bring you back to the home page for Salesforce. Now it does take some time for that implementation to take effect and to be completed. But when you do sign back into the Defender portal, I'll show you what it looks like. Let's go to Secure Score and Recommended Actions. And let's find the action that we were working on. There it is. You can see that the impact score has increased by half a percent and the points achieved are five out of five. The status completion is also highlighted. Let's click on that. And under history, you can see that the point changes over time reflects a score of five. So to wrap things up, I just want to bring up some key points on how this adds value to your organization. Having a central location for your security configurations is fundamental. On the back end, the recommended actions is completely done by Microsoft. All you need to do is make sure you implement those actions. The configuration of an SSPM will allow your company to make sure that it fulfills it's shared responsibility, meaning you know you're doing your due diligence to make sure that your customer's data is secure. In IT, a single solution for all threats is not possible, but SSPM can provide an immense resource and value to your organization. Another way to add value to your organization is to make sure you establish best practices. Examples of this could be the establishment of a DLP system. You can evaluate your SaaS providers you can encrypt your cloud data, or a big one would be to employ the identity and access management solution. 
Some of these key points are going to be covered off in a future demonstration. I hope this demo was useful to you and I'll see you on the next video.